thanks to everyone who planned and worked tirelessly to make this day a success, which it is already. On July 4th, 1776, our founding fathers penned the Declaration of Independence, announcing their separation from Great Britain and its king. Needless to say, war ensued between the United States and Great Britain but we were not alone in our battle. We had many friends from other countries, but one so loved, so well deserving of all the platitudes and gratitudes that was given him over the coming years. Hearing and seeing of war on April in, 18, in 1777, Marquis de Lafayette left France and headed toward this new nation, this United States. When Lafayette arrived in these United States, he came to fight with, to help General George Washington and our troops as we fought for our freedom. As you see the sign behind me, Lyle's Church was established in 1774. <coughs> Lyle's Church was here during the time of Lafayette fighting with the American Revolution. The building then was just a little, a little past this building. It was a log and wood stockade building but it was here, and as we know from history, many great people have come out of Lyle's church. This country, its people, have been through many a war, many a conflict, and our men and women have helped to defend that freedom that was made possible, not just by our citizens, but citizens from other countries. And we owe, and still owe, a great, great deal of gratitude to Marquis de Lafayette, who helped us as a young nation obtain its freedom. As we celebrate this return, we know that Lafayette left Richmond, stopped at Columbia, and then came what would have been the route, unless you went by the river, <coughs> traveling from Richmond to Charlottesville, to Monticello, and the places in that area and on that trip, as those of you who ventured the walk were up at the intersection, Curran's Tavern, where Lafayette stopped and stayed and visited and was welcomed by the citizens of Fluvanna County. During all these years, through all the things that have happened, Lyle's Baptist Church is still here may be a different building, but this church, like many, many churches in this county, in this state, and around this nation, have the freedom to worship, the freedom to live lives as we choose. 
that freedom is partly because of the beloved Lafayette who fought with us and for us. Freedom was worth fighting for then. And I want you to know now that freedom is worth fighting for. Freedom, independence that we have, that we celebrate, that many places don't. Go back, think in history of all the men, the women who have made us and kept us free. I want to especially thank the box who uh, brought the carriage here, drove the, uh, the carriage and, and brought Lafayette with us. On a lighter note, Lafayette, how has your time been here so far? Mercy, very, very good, very fine. Oh, Have you overdone it at all on any occasion? There's a rumor going about the, the, the taverns up here. <laughs> Is that why you had to rest at, uh, at, at the Boy Tavern? Before you went to, Lafayette, before you went yeah. to visit Thomas Jefferson? When I first came to this country, I was... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for being here. Um, there was a musical tribute that was uh, a tribute that was a tribute to Lafayette that was written by Miss Virginia Randolph Carey, who was the uh, lady of uh, Carey's Brook Farm, uh, and she uh, wrote this uh, wrote this particular uh, poem, extolling uh, Lafayette and his contribution to our country. So the uh, musical group is going to be community singers are going to be. Uh, singing this uh, this particular poem that she wrote. Also, uh, on the occasion of Lafayette's visit to Wilmington, <clears throat> there were a number of toasts given. But since we're on Baptist property, we're going to call them tributes. <laughs> and we're going to give to uh, Lafayette for his uh, his service, his, his um, 
uh, and what we felt about him and his contribution to our to our to our country. So there are ten of those tributes that we're going to offer now, and I'm going to call these on these various folks to um, uh, to share them with us. If you need to come up here, if you're allowed, if you speak well, uh, please uh, speak where you are. The first is Dennis Bigelow, who is representing President James Monroe. The General Lafayette in our American Revolution, the sun in the firmament of history, we salute you. Peggy <laughs> Slaughter. To Washington, to our beloved and now cast on Washington, we remember you. Uh, Mr. Jefferson spoke to you, the lamp that lighted our land to liberty and glory that burned bright to the socket. Thank you. Andrew Sorrell as Martin Tutwiler. The sixth day of September, 1757, which gave liberty a hero, a philanthropist to the world. April 1777, Lafayette came to our shore. Molly Sewing. So young, so brave, so free, to fight for strangers' liberty. Casey Talley. The firm and consistent patriot and the fearless hero in the cause of liberty and the rights of man. Overton McGee. Withered be the hearts that deny him honor as our enemies withered before him at York. Thomas Bayer. Lafayette, men who defied one king to help us overthrow another on our quest for liberty. We are eternally grateful. John Timberlake, a friend indeed is a friend indeed. And may the oppressed of every country, when struggling for independence and liberty, find a Lafayette for their friend. Kathleen Kilpatrick. On that note, I offer as the Scotswoman a Scottish toast. May all our friends be happy and our enemies know it. <laughs> is uh, Sarah, Sarah Splawn here? Yes. Yes. Sarah is um, from uh, Harrisonburg. No, she, pardon? Stand close. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, has some things to share with us. She is a descendant of someone who was here at that time. Okay, Sarah. Miles, oh, Miles Carey Wills was my <clears throat> third great grandfather. He lived from 1794 to 1872, and he attended the banquet given for Lafayette on November 3rd, 1824, here at Wilmington. I do not have any information whether he was kin or not to Horatio Wills, the owner of Coles Tavern at the time. But a note was found in the collection of Wills, Bowles, and Fuqua papers formerly in the possession of William Slaughter Wills, 1837 to 1918 of Fluvanna County. And it stated in this note, in 1825, of course they got the real, the, the year wrong, but in 1825, Miles Carey Wills attended the banquet given to Lafayette at the Old Coles Tavern or hotel in Wilmington, Fluvanna County, given by the citizens of Fluvanna. Colonel Joe Perkins was an influential citizen and helped get up the banquet. He received Lafayette and was Toastmaster on this occasion. <clears throat> Lafayette arrived in his coach pulled by four fine studs. The event was heralded and attended by a large number of the prominent citizens of the sections through which he passed en route from Richmond to Charlottesville. And Miles Carey Wills was the um, Wills that lived at Woodlawn Plantation, which is no longer in existence. <clears throat> and his wife was Rebecca Mitchell Bowles, 
the daughter of Benjamin Bowles, the faithful clerk of Lyles Baptist Church. Um, I have a few pictures of Woodlawn if anyone is interested, but thank you. My admiration of Lafayette was then simply the admiration of what was great and virtuous. In paying my secret homage to his character, I little foresaw that I should possess the honor of his friendship and discover that his virtues as a patriot, a soldier, and a statesman formed only a part of his virtues as a man, and that the beauty of his character in private was in perfect unison with the purity of his public life. Marianne Hill as Francis Wright. Now we get to national anthems. <laughs> we'll start with the French national anthem. Allons enfants de la patrie, le jour de gloire est arrivé. Contre nous de la tyrannie, l'étendard sanglant est levé. L'étendard sanglant est levé. Entendez-vous dans les campagnes mugir ces féroces soldats. Ils viennent jusque dans nos bras, égorger nos fils et nos compagnes. Aux armes citoyens, formez vos bataillons, marchons, marchons. Qu'un sang impur abreuve nos sillons. I hope you will allow the use of a gift from my good friend Benjamin Franklin. The sunglasses. <laughs> Very modern. Very modern. Mm -hmm. Merci, thank you, thank you. My dear fluvid of friends, you cannot imagine how happy I am to once more be in your company. I love your beautiful county. When I first arrived in your state, it was before your young country was formed. I fought alongside my beloved General George Washington. After many battles and a great loss of life, we gave birth to your country of liberty and freedom. I have visited now many of the 24 states which make up the United States of America, and will be traveling to the remaining ones that I have not had the pleasure of seeing on this special trip. I have been received by many well-known and high-ranking officials and feel honored by all of their kind words, but despite all the accolades and celebrations, nowhere do I feel more loved and acknowledged than here in the county of Lubana. Since returning to my native country of France after the American Revolution, I have been through many trials and tribulations. I have lost much of my fortune and many of my family members and friends while turning to fight for France to have the same type of democratic public government as my treasured America. I was a very young man when I visit, decided to leave France and come to the colonies. I was born into a very wealthy family and was expected to serve the king and queen and participate in the activities of the court. I was born also into a family of the military men and I wanted nothing more than to fight and become a leader of soldiers. France wanted me to be a gentleman officer but I wanted to participate in the battles. And then I heard about the American colonies declaring their independence from England. I left my aristocratic life and decided to join the Americans. I had to leave without telling anyone about my decision, including my dear bride. I bought a ship with my own money and with a group of fellow Frenchmen, we headed across the Atlantic. The fight against Great Britain was long and hard. Many of the revolutionary patriots suffered more than I, but they thought the challenge was worth the cost. 
among the many prominent citizens of Virginia who are George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and your own General Hartwell Cook, and of course your current president, James Monroe. In February 1874, I received a letter from President Monroe inviting me to visit my adopted country. At this point, France was once again engaged in turmoil, and I was at a low point in my life. I missed the country of my military successes and the friendships that I had established on my previous visits to the United States. I wrote back to my friend Monroe to accept the invitation offered by him and Congress. So I brought my son, George Washington Lafayette, and my assistant, Auguste Levasseur, back to the land of my glorious and exciting youth. I was a mere 19 years old when I arrived in South Carolina, eager to start my military career. I was young and brash and skinny, <laughs> but filled with determination to help free the colonies from the rule of Britain. I joined many of your fellow citizens to shed my blood, spend my assets, and risk the fury of my king and country. At last, France became an ally, and with the help of the French Navy at Yorktown, and a little-known slave by the name of James, we defeated the British at Yorktown. With the bravery and determination of the American revolutionists and the combination of the French military experience and the ideals of freedom and liberty, we were able to change the course of history. Tomorrow morning, I will leave of, take leave of your wonderful county and will make my way to Monticello home of my dear friend, Thomas Jefferson. It is a moment that I have long anticipated. I look forward to many long conversations and pleasant evenings, discussing many aspects of our current world. With Thomas Jefferson's guidance, I wrote for France the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, which inspired the French Revolution. Viva los States Unis! Long live the United States! And may I offer to the county of Fluvanna and Michon Creek, where Upper and Lower Virginians rendezvous to show the enemy the road to Yorktown. Thank you, sir. Now we get to sing our national anthem. So we will uh, be joined by our, our uh, community singers and we'll stand. <coughs>